Now, why would I be riding along quiet rural lanes in the northernmost part of Bedfordshire just to seek out an old church? Well, firstly, for the ride. Seeking out these medieval treasures often draws you into remote parts of the countryside, along lanes you might otherwise never think to travel. And I can't stress this highly enough. To ride along the many lanes of rural England is to rediscover the joy of pure, unhindered motorcycling. Man and machine in close harmony with the steps and wheels of others who have travelled these lanes for thousands of years. It's more about the destination, not the arrival, admittedly. And yet there is such treasure to be found. I've read that the church in Shelton is a very special building. Most medieval churches were heavily restored in Victorian times. St Mary's was not. So I'm hoping to see a church which has had a minimum of restoration and so does not appear so different from the state it was in at the time of the Reformation under Henry VIII. Meanwhile, there's this lane to enjoy. That West Tower dates to the 14th century. I mean, just imagine that. That's 1300 or something. The 14th century was a period of great human suffering as the Black Death crept its way across Europe. It decimated the population of Britain, which in turn left the survivors in a new world. Just look at this ancient door. Think of the time span across which people have been pushing it open, just like me now. And immediately I'm struck by the medieval wall paintings recovered from under the whitewash of the reformers. There's some text and decoration over this pillar. Beyond is an image of St Christopher. I admit that it's difficult to make out, but St Christopher carrying the Christ child on his back is nearly always located in this position, opposite the south door through which I have entered. The patron saint of travellers is positioned to welcome travellers. Travellers like me. It's a wonderful thought. To the right of this is a painted image said to be of St Michael with a pair of scales for weighing souls, with the Virgin Mary pressing down on one side, interceding on our behalf. I freely admit that I would not have recognised this without a bit of research beforehand. It's been said before, but these colours would have been very bright and would have covered the whole church, and whatever your theology you have to admit that it would have been a spectacle for the peasants who stepped in here. The only art and painted colour a medieval peasant might ever have seen. Just look at those beams. How old are they? Are any of them pre-19th century? Possibly Tudor? And that rood, the medieval term for the Christ crucified. When was that put up there? Surely it's not pre-Reformation. I can't find any information. But that's certainly a pre-Reformation rood screen below it. 
and just right of that chancel arch you can see yet more medieval wall painting. And more on the left, I've no idea what they represent. That's the rickety ladder to the belfry. It looks as ancient as the church. Another painted wall decoration. More text on the wall. Then you have this little side chapel with what looks like the original tower clock face and hands propped up against the wall. Someone has placed this printed image of the Virgin and Child in the old chapel. And from the side of the rude screen, you can see the leper's window positioned so that lepers who were kept strictly outside could see the raising of the host at the altar during mass without infecting others. The host was the bread become the body of Christ, utterly sacred to Catholic believers then and now. Lepers would have huddled at the window to see the event there at the main altar with the glorious east window behind. And there under this elaborate window would have been yet another little side chapel. Look at the rickety unrestored nature of this church. There's the piscina of the main altar There's another for the side chapel I've just mentioned. Piscinas were shallow basins used for the washing of communion vessels. And here I'm just panning back over the church pews, never replaced by Victorian restorers. These must be early 17th or even 16th century. This column is the oldest part of the church, the easternmost column of the North Arcade. This has a scalloped design dating to the late Norman period, in other words, to the latter part of the 12th century. So erected in 11 something, not long after the Norman conquest. There's that 14th century tower again. The nave window with some external decoration. That lower window is the leper's window seen from the outside this, this time. Lepers would have looked in here and would have been in sight of the main altar. Just look at the tracery in these windows. How wonderfully elaborate and ambitious
There's the eastern end of the church. And once more back to the tower. Collecting my helmet from the church, it's time to head back to the bike. That church was, of course, a treasure, but so too are the little lanes around here, tucked away apart from the main highways. And this single cylinder 500, now discontinued by Royal Enfield, offers the ideal way on which to explore them. Torquay, with the low revving pulling power in the right place, its place is that for which it was originally designed in the pre-motorway age, the winding country lanes of England. take you back to the words with which I opened. Why would I be riding along quiet rural lanes in the northernmost part of Bedfordshire to seek out an old church? Well, you've seen the treasure that was that medieval building. But the answer to the question is chiefly for the ride. The joy of pure, unhindered motorcycling, man and machine in close harmony with those who have travelled these lanes for thousands of years before. I'm riding here in March. We're coming out of winter and the day is bright and cold. I'm wearing as many clothes as I can squeeze under my motorcycle gear plus my heavy fur-lined gauntlets. Just look at the vivid blue of that sky. I count myself lucky to be motorcycling on a day like this. YouTube is my store of motorcycling memories. If you would like to share with me the places discovered whilst out on the road, I would welcome your company. Please like, subscribe, and click on the notification bell, and I'll let you know when I'm next out and about. For now, I'm done.